Shalom Aleichem and welcome to Simple Biblical Hebrew. I'm Eric Modal. Today we want to continue on our study, learning the Sermon on the Mount in Biblical Hebrew from Bronze Delich's translation of the New Testament into Hebrew. And today we're picking it up in chapter 5, verse 21, and we can see it here in the Hebrew. We are right there. Shematim. Shematim is you have heard. Shema is the verbal root. Shema Israel means to hear. And then the tem at the end is you, plural. Shematim. You have heard. You have heard. Shematim. Ki. That. Ne amar. That it has been said. Amar is to say in Hebrew. La kad monim. So you have heard that it has been said by the ancients is what it says here in the English. Kadmonim is the Hebrew and Kadmonim comes from the verbal root Kadem, Kadam. And it, it means earlier or beforehand um, gets into Things like when when the sun comes up in the east, so kadem means before, and so kadmonim then is the ancients, right? Those who were before us. Lo, which is you know, do you shall not is where we're going to get the not out of this. Lo, tirzach, tirzach is you shall not murder. So in Hebrew, you shall not murder would be lo tirzach. And um, the verbal root is ratzach, which is to murder. Ba'asher, which is and whoever, yirzach, commits murder, ratzach. May Chuyav, he will be mm, sort of given over to. Chuyav, Chuyav is the root and it means to be sort of given over. Who, he will, who is he? Levait, Bait in Hebrew is a house and Vait is the house of. So Levait Din, Levait Din. The Veit Din. So the, the Veit Din was one of the lower um, courts in Israel, maybe a local court where the Av Veit Din um, might have resided over in that area to make lowercase judgments. Not the Av Veit Din of the Sanhedrin, but uh, a lesser Av Veit Din. And so Veit Din. Because Beit is house, and then Dean is one of the Hebrew words for to to judge. Avel, however, or but in Hebrew. Avel, Ani, Ani is I, Omer, say, Lachem, to you, plural. Call Asher, which would be everyone who, call Asher, everyone who, Yigzof. Yigzof is, is angry. Al Achiv with his brother. Al is sort of upon, literally. And then Ach is brother. So Achiv is his brother. Chinam. Chinam is without cause in Hebrew. Mechiyav. He will be given over. Who? That's the he. So will be given over he, Chuyav, Levate Din. So even if you're angry with your brother, you'll be given over to the Beit Din. Be'esher Yomar 
al achiv reka. So, and whoever, asher is whoever, says to his brother, achiv again, reka. Reka is, here in the English is fool. It actually comes from the Aramaic. And the Aramaic and the Hebrew roots are similar. And they have to do with being thin or sort of um, maybe empty. So, you know, whoever says to his brother, Reka, or you, you empty, you empty head, you fool. Mechuyav, who? He will be given over. Lesan Hadrin. You might hear that um, root in there. It's a Sanhedrin. Lesan Hadrin, which is the superior court. Actually, the, the Reka was not, uh, excuse me, I was wrong. The Reka was you good for nothing, which is sort of being thin or empty back here. Uh, and I apologize for that. Reka is. Um, not fool here. It's it's uh, you good for nothing. I kind of got off there. Mechuyav, who he will be given over la Sanhadrin to the San to the Supreme Court here, but it's to the Sanhedrin. So Reka is still Aramaic and Hebrew, and it has to do with being thin or empty. But it was translated here, good for nothing. Va Asher Yomar, and whoever says. Ata to you, Hanavel. That's that's the fool. Remember Nabel in the Old Testament story of of King David and Abigail and her husband Nabal, who was um, his name meant fool. Nabel, Nabel. So whoever says you fool, may Huyav will be given over Leesh Gehinam, which is to the to the. Uh, Esh is fire in Hebrew, and then Gehinam is the the valley of Hinam, south of the old city of David. Maybe you've heard of Gehenna, the fires of, of hell here is what it says, the fiery hell in English. And then if I click on the subscript, it says the Gehenna of fire, literally. And so Franz Delich translated it correctly here, La Esh Gehinam. Ge in Hebrew is, is a valley. And then Hinam is was a man's name, a family's name. And so their their land there became known as Gehinam, which was where they would put the the trash and burn it in the old days and and uh, all the gross stuff of the it was like the city dump. And so Gehinam. So it became sort of known as hell, figuratively. Verse 23, Lachen, which is therefore, in takriv, if you are coming near, the verbal root is karab, and it means to, to be near or close, and in the English here it's presenting, Korbancha. Korbancha is your offering. You've probably heard in the English New Testament, Korban. And so that's that root there. Korban. Korbancha. Your offering. Al. Ham Mizbeach. Mizbeach is, is the altar in Hebrew. Visham. And there. His core, you remember, is a car, is the verbal root, and it means to remember. His core, he yesh, that there is, he yesh, le achicha, your, to your brother, davar alecha. So if you're coming near the altar and there you remember that there is to your brother a thing on you. It's kind of literally in Hebrew. So if you come to, the, to, to do an offering and there you remember that there's something 
uh, that your brother has something against you. And when you say a thing in Hebrew, it's written as a word. Dabar is word in Hebrew. And it also means a thing. Azov. Ba Azov, which is for, their forsake, you know, is, is the idea. Um, Azov in Hebrew is to forsake, to leave something. And you can see here, it's the verbal root of, of both of those sets of letters. And when you say Azov, ba Azov, it means sort of leave it quickly or leave it, you know, really leave it. <laughs> um, don't just leave it, but really leave it really fast um, with urgency. Sham, which is there. Et korbancha, your offering. Lifne, pena is the root, which is face, but it really means here before Hamiz Beach, the altar. Be Kadem, so we talked about Kadem earlier. If you remember, we were talking about the the Kad Munim and how they were the ancients beforehand. And so in this case, Kadem means leave your altar, or leave your offering there before the altar. Uh, and uh, at the face of the altar, and first, Kadem would be first, Beforehand, lelachet, which is go, to go, to walk, or to go. Le chaper, and chaper is to um, reconcile to, to your brother. And where we're going to get that, that idea, to be reconciled. Chaper in uh, Hebrew, the verbal root is um, kapar. It's where we get Yom Kippur, and it means to atone or to cover something. So go and, and be, you know, reconciled or atoned to your brother first. Pine Achicha. So go be reconciled to your brother first. Ve Achare, and then afterwards, Achar means after. So. And then afterwards, pin, which is surely bo, go, hak, rev, go near, et korbanecha. So bring near your, your, um, your korban, your offering. So that, that's sort of the idea. Hopefully that all sort of made sense. So first go and and uh, be kippured to your brother, and then come and afterwards present your uh, your your korban, your offering to to the Lord. Then bring it near to Him. Meher, which is to be quick in Hebrew. Kit ratze, the verbal root is ratza, and it means to be to be pleased with something. So heat ratze here would be quickly you're going to do this. So heat is you're going to do this. Heat ratze. So quickly, you know, bring pleasure leish to to the man rivcha that you are um, disputing with. Reeve is uh, to have a dispute. Beodcha, which is sort of, would be Beodcha Baderek, while you're on the way. This is sort of while you're on Derek, the way, or the road. Ito, with him. Pin, or else. Yasgir, Sagar, in Hebrew, is to be locked up. Itcha, which is you, Ish, Rivcha, the man that you're having a dispute with, El, Ha, Shofet, to the judge, Shofet, Shofet is 
judge. Ve hashofet and the judge Yas Girha will have you locked up. Le Shoter. He will he will sort of um well in this case in English it would be hand you over to the officer, which it means to be locked up to the officer. Officers Shoter. Ve Hash Lachta. And you will be thrown. Shalach means to be to be thrown. Al veit hakela or hakele, which is the uh, you will be thrown into um, to the prison, to the house of the prison. So, because uh, kele means to be to be sort of held. Amen, which is Amen. Omer ani lach, which is I say to you. Right? Amar is to say ani, I, lach, to you. Lo titze misham. You will not come out of there. Titze means you come out. Misham is from there. Odd. Asher, until it's kind of the idea there. Ad asher until shilamta, which is uh, the verbal root is shalom, and it means we know it as peace. Shalom, shalom. Here it means until you have sort of fulfilled or paid off or made peace at ha peruta. Peruta is the smallest little coin that you could have paid with. Ha ache rona, which is um, you will not come out of there until you have made peace or or paid off every last you know cent. I guess is what it might say in English or something like that. It's because peruta is the smallest uh, coin. Ache Rona, which is um, again, Achar means um, afterward in in Hebrew, and you can see Achar here. So Ach Rona is last sent. Well, hopefully that helped a little bit today. It's a little bit messy. I think Yeshu is making the point that, and actually. If if you were to look up Hillel and Shammai, these great rabbis from the first century A.D., um, and uh, Hillel was even born before the first century A.D., but um, they were famous rabbis in Jesus' day and beforehand. And the question had come up, you know, when when you're bringing your korban, when you're bringing your offering to the Lord, and there's something against you and your brother, should you go and should you go and um, reconcile to your brother first before you worship Adonai? And Shammai uh, is reported to have said, no, you can go ahead and just uh, worship the Lord and don't worry about that. And I believe it was Hillel, the older rabbi, that said, no, you should first go and make peace with your brother and then come present your offering to the Lord. And so Yeshua here is actually um, participating in Judaism of his day, first century Judaism, and in Judaism you would you would basically uh, rabbis would answer certain questions, and in Yeshua's day there was basically Shammai's opinion and Hillel's opinion. That's how big these rabbis were. You can type their names into the internet, and you'll see information come up on these famous rabbis. But Yeshua here is essentially agreeing with Hillel. He didn't come up with this this um, scenario, but this was a famous question posed to the rabbis in his day, and he uh, he agrees with Hillel. You should first, if we have something going on with a brother or a sister, and we're going to go to church, we're going to go to synagogue, we're going to go worship the Lord, and we, we know that this thing hasn't been kapoored yet, it hasn't been worked out between us, we should go and first try to be reconciled to them and 
make peace with them before worshiping the Lord. Do our best to seek peace and pursue it. That's really important to Yeshua, and that should be really important to us today. So yeah, I hope that I hope that helps. We want to try to make peace with man as best we know how before we worship the Lord. As far as it's up to us, well, that should be important in our lives. At any rate, I hope um, that's been an encouragement to you today. I pray that, that Adonai would bless you and keep you. Yaverekecha Adonai veishmarecha. Yeer Adonai peinav elecha vikonecha. Yisa Adonai peinav elecha veyisim lecha shalom. Shem Yeshua. Amen.